Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So I am back with another hygiene talk. More specifically in this video, I'm going to discuss what I do to take care of the crevices and the creases of my body. So my skin rolls, my fat rolls, my love handles, uh, my panty line area, all of that. We're gonna be talking about how I take care of those sensitive areas of my body. So I just first wanna let you all know that I'm not a medical professional. Y'all already know that. So I'm not gonna be held liable for what you may or may not do because of this video. And uh, I would say that if you are having some more serious issues, any skin lesions, any infections, any odors, anything like that, then try your best to seek medical attention. So the first rule of thumb, anything that I'm gonna say in any hygiene video um, is to always make sure that your body is properly cleaned and to always make sure that you dry your body after cleaning it. So um, more specifically, when it comes to uh, skin folds or fat rolls, crevices, very important to open those areas up when you are cleaning them. So uh, let's use our back rolls as an example, your love handles. When you're in the shower, very important to lift those areas up and clean in between. Don't exfoliate. I know that I'm big on exfoliating. I mention it in every video, but it's not smart to exfoliate areas of your skin that are already irritated, especially if there's broken skin, do not exfoliate that. It'll just make it worse and you don't wanna deal with those problems and I don't want that for you. So no exfoliating, but very important to clean those areas. More specifically, clean them with antibacterial soap. Now you don't oftentimes hear me say that on this channel um, because I, I don't usually like using antibacterial soap on anything below the waist, but when we're talking about the crevices of your body, very important to make sure you're using uh, Dial is usually a good antibacterial soap. It kind of does strip the moisture out of your skin, so very important to put that moisture back in. But to me, uh, Dial, any type of Castile soap, those are true antibacterial soaps. There may be others out there, and I'm sure people will comment them down below, but I would always, you know, Dial is the first choice. Get the Dial white bar as far as the antibacterial soap. But you make sure that those areas of your body are clean. So we're talking about your uh, love handles, making sure you get in there, lift those up and clean them. We're talking about that area, uh, your panty line. So you're lifting up your stomach, cleaning that area. If you have multiple stomach rolls, then you got to lift up every single roll and get in there and clean. And don't be scared to uh, clean your body or touch your body because it is your body. You want to take care of it the best that you can. And so that includes cleaning it. So don't be scared to lift up that part of your body and get in there with that washcloth. I will always say use a washcloth because I feel that you get the cleanest using a washcloth. Get in there with that and clean your body very good. Don't be too harsh with the washcloth, but make sure you are getting in there and rubbing the area really well. Now, once you are clean, it's very important to dry off as quickly as you can. Always pat dry. Try not to rub too much on those areas, especially if you're drying something off, you're using a dry towel, don't rub too harshly. Always try to pat dry those areas, get in there and lift up those rolls and pat dry them specifically. Now, something you can do is like an added measure. You can use a hair dryer, like a, a handheld hand, hair dryer, plug it up and lift up those, those rolls and dry them out if you need to. Or sometimes I stand in front of the fan. So after I'm already dried off, to make sure I don't sweat again either after just getting out of the hot shower and drying off, I will stand in front of the fan and just chill out for a few minutes. Two, three minutes and you're good. So that's something else that you can try. Something else that I like to do, I know a lot of people like to use deodorant on crevices of their body and underneath their breasts. Me in particular, I like body powder. So um, I have this Arm & Hammer body powder. Uh, what I love about it is specifically, it says that it helps control body odor, absorb sweat and moisture, and it keeps the body cool and dry. Very important, it's getting hot outside. It's been in the 90s here, so I know it's probably hot wherever else y'all are. So very important for stuff to keep you cool and dry. And this is a talk-free body powder by Arm & Hammer. So I'll link everything that I talk about in my description box down below, but I like to put body powder on those crevices of my body. So what I like to do after I've dried off my entire body is I put a towel down on my bed and I'll lay it down flat. And I usually like to sprinkle a little bit of this on my panty line. So right up underneath my belly. Usually when I lay back, I don't need to lift up my belly, but if you do need to, lift up your belly, go ahead and do so, and sprinkle a little bit of powder just on your panty line. I guess they would call that, would that be considered your bikini line? 
bikini line, panty line, whatever the case is, sprinkle a little bit of powder right there. And then I also make sure to uh, lift up my breasts. I do have to kind of lift them up while I'm laying down. And I just sprinkle a little bit of powder underneath each breast. Uh, a little bit goes along with this powder. You will find that out quickly. And I am sure to sprinkle a little bit of it in my belly button because again, that's another closed off area. Uh, anywhere that's closed off or anywhere that uh, kind of lays on top of another area, um, it's susceptible to build up bacteria if you're not keeping the area clean and dry. So I'm sure to put a little bit in my belly button, a little bit under my breast, a little bit on my panty line. And then when it comes to my back rolls, I then stand up and I kind of have to stand to the side and kind of do this motion right here to put it underneath there. Now, when it comes to the belly roll, not belly roll, but to your uh, back rolls or your love handles, you may have to go in there and kind of smear the powder around, really get into those crevices. Don't be scared to touch your body in any of this because it's your body. So you need to get very familiar with yourself when we're talking about these kinds of things. Now, something else that I love that I've been doing probably Gosh, as long as I found these, I think I found these maybe about six or seven years ago, and I've been addicted to them ever since. Ever since, and I mentioned it in I think a shapewear video. But these are stretchy tank tops. Now these are not necessarily shapewear at all. They don't advertise themselves as shapewear. They're advertised. They're advertised as uh, camisoles. So um, spaghetti strap tank tops is what people call them too. But this one in particular is a stretchy one. I always get black and I get these from Rose's Discount Store. If I can find something similar, I will link it down below. But I wear these stretchy tank tops underneath almost every outfit. Besides like a sleeveless dress or something like that, I wear this under every outfit because I feel like it helps to absorb any sweat from my body throughout the day. While we're talking about clothing, something else that I want to mention is it's very important to try and wear breathable clothing if you can. So um, especially panties, we're talking about that panty line area where you may have a stomach that hangs slightly lower. Very important to wear panties that fit you. Um, say for example, right at your panty line area, you have some irritation. So you decide that you want to wear your skimpy little panties that sit right there where the irritation is. That's a no-go. When you already have irritation underneath your belly, very important for you to go to those full coverage panties, honey, that come a little bit what above your belly button or right at your belly button. You got to go for those. You can't wear the skin tight panties or the skin tight jeans when you have stuff going on because it's just going to make the situation worse. So always try to wear breathable clothing. Um, make sure you're wearing the right size because if it is too tight, um, even when it comes to your bra size, if you're not wearing the correct band size, if it's too tight, it can start to dig into those uh, those side rolls, those love handles, and it can create uh, lesions and sores. Trust me, I've been there as far as the bra line is concerned. And I feel like it didn't click to me that, hey, you need to change your band size along with your cup size. Like, I feel like my mom taught me that, but I don't think I absorbed it. I don't know whatever it is. But eventually, I caught on and realized that I needed to change my band size and go up to avoid that discomfort. And also to make sure that the bra fits me properly. So, um, always make sure you're wearing the proper size clothing. Make sure you're wearing breathable clothing as well. Uh, something else I'm going to mention, and I don't no normally do this on my channel. Um, I mention products all the time. But I don't normally mention medicated products. So I am going to um, put a image on the screen. And the name of this product is called Yeast Guard. Um, I got it from CVS. Now, I picked up this in particular when I was having some irritation under my breast. Um, my irritation wasn't caused by yeast, but um, it was something that I picked up because I thought that was the issue. It turned out to not be the issue. But if you are experiencing any discomfort in the crevices of your body, you feel like it may be related to a yeast infection, then I do advise to use this yeast guard. It is topical. I heard that it works pretty well when it comes to yeast. It is strictly atopical. I wouldn't put it... Um, you know, in your vaginal area or anything like that if you have a yeast infection. But if you think that you have um, some irritation in the crevices of your body, then I would recommend that for a topical solution for sure. It was recommended to me um, and the person mentioned that, you know, they had a lot of luck with it. This is a person that I trust, their opinion. So I am going to go ahead and recommend this yeast scar. Another thing I want to say is um, if you do see that you're starting to have some irritation, very important not to pick at those areas either. Um, I know sometimes when things are irritated, they may itch, depending on, you know, if it's an infection or not. Do not scratch. 
don't touch it. If you can avoid touching it with your fingertips, try your best not to touch it with your fingertips. I know that sounds weird, but we have so much bacteria that builds up in our nails. Um, our natural nails alone carry a lot of bacteria. And then if you have these, a lot can build up underneath there, especially if you're not cleaning them properly. So always make sure your hands are clean regardless if COVID is going on or not. Got to keep your hands clean. Got to keep those nails clean. They got to be clean. And then don't scratch those areas that may be irritated. Um, another thing, if you notice like a change in, um, not necessarily a change in odor, but the, if there is an odor in any of these creases, or if you start noticing uh, discoloration of the skin um, up until uh, you start noticing some uh, lesions or openings, very important to try and seek medical attention if you can. Um, whether that's even just going to a clinic, CVS Minute Clinic, they take cash and you don't have to have insurance. Urgent care, you don't have to have insurance. If you have the money to do so, try your best to see if you can go to those places. Um, because thing is, skin infections, it can get worse to the point where they end up in your bloodstream. Again, I'm not a medical professional, but the little bit that I do know is that it can get pretty bad if it's left untreated. So, you know, you've tried the topicals, you know that you're a clean, you know that you're a hygienic person, you're keeping the areas clean and dry. Um, you've tried the topical solutions, you've tried the body powder, you wear clothes that fit, you do all these things and you're still having the issue. Try your best to seek medical attention. Um, I know that times can be hard. I've been in that boat, not having any insurance, having little to no money, but if it gets worse, it's going to get pretty bad quickly if it gets into your bloodstream. So you don't want it to get to that point. So try your best to follow all those steps. It gets to the point where I'm going to suggest something else here. I'm kind of just thinking out loud when it comes to this, but it may get to the point where you have to limit the kind of clothing that you wear. So maybe when you get home, maybe you need to wear less clothing, throw on a loose t-shirt, a loose nightgown, that kind of thing. Um, as soon as you get home, just so there's not added friction to the area. So that's something else to keep in mind. These are things that I do and they seem to work out for me. And I really don't know of anything else to tell you. So I hope that that's somewhat helpful with the tank top. Um, idea and with the areas that you put the body powder in and I hope that maybe you can get that yeast scar to try that out. Um, other than that, I really don't have any more suggestions. I wish I was more helpful in that sense, but that's really all that I know to do. Uh, try out that yeast guard if you have and if you've never heard of that, I think that it's a great topical to try out um, just for like low grade yeast infections or low grade skin irritation. Again, if you notice any discoloration or anything um, outside of the normal as far as any kind of odor, if it's a very strong odor, definitely seek medical attention because anything that anybody on the internet is going to say, it can't help you at that point. And I'm just keeping it real with you. You got to find a way to seek that medical attention. So I um, hope that you found this video somewhat helpful and comment down below if you have any more specific questions as it relates to anything else hygiene related or if you would like my advice on anything else. If you have any additional advice to share, if maybe you have made your own home remedy of some things, um, I don't know if vinegar may work, uh, like a mixture of vinegar, water, vinegar and water on those areas that may work. I'm not sure. But if you have any more, I guess, would you, uh, what's the word I would use? Homeopathic, maybe? If you have any more of those kinds of remedies or anything that you have used, comment them down below. I'm sure it would be helpful to a lot of people. So thank you all so much for watching and I will talk to you again in my next video. Bye.